Here are some of the lyrics. You ready? Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold up. Okay, so that's Ben Shapiro. He's a conservative commentator, probably best known for videos of him totally and completely owning the libs, for sure. His high-pitched, rapid-fire words have been weaponized by the right and dark corners of the internet, like Facebook. I'm comedian Joe Mandy, and this is the story of how Ben Shapiro went from a low-key Breitbart columnist to an overnight viral conservative star. Well, you all know Ben Shapiro. If you don't, where have you been? He's become one of the nation's leading figures in the effort to preserve free speech. Benjamin Aaron Shapiro was born in 1984, deep in liberal, multicultural Los Angeles, California. His family, however, was a speck of red in a sea of blue. The Shapiros, who both worked in Hollywood in the film industry, were Jewish Reagan Republicans. It was the type of upbringing that allowed him to play violin for an audience that included Larry King. In addition to the violin, he plays chess. Uplifting stuff. That's the theme to Schindler's List. Shapiro started attending UCLA early as a young 16-year-old. He graduated in 2004, one year before he could drink. By the time he turned 21, he already had two published books under his belt. In 2007, he graduated from Harvard Law School at the age of 23. Out of school, Shapiro tried his hand at screenwriting. I've written a couple comedies, uh, kind of hour-long dramedies for, uh, you know, spec script. And it, have they been bought? Uh, no. Shapiro claims he was blacklisted by Hollywood. It may have just been a height requirement. He never wrote another screenplay. Instead, Shapiro set up his own consulting firm, Benjamin Shapiro Legal Consulting. It's unclear when that too fizzled out, but in 2012, after five published books under his belt, Shapiro went to work for the far-right-leaning website Breitbart.com. He was the site's editor-at-large, and he wrote about justifying Trayvon Martin's death and about how Americans should be able to criticize Muslims. In another piece, Shapiro tries to dismantle the existence of white privilege. But in March 2016, Shapiro, to his credit, left his post at Breitbart in solidarity with female reporter Michelle Fields, who had been assaulted by Corey Lewandowski, who was then Trump's campaign manager. In a resignation statement, Shapiro wrote that Steve Bannon and Donald Trump are bullies and that Bannon had shaped the company into Trump's personal Pravda, which is a cool millennial reference. After his stint at Breitbart, Shapiro and his Hollywood producer friend, Jeremy Boring, LOL, poured their efforts into The Daily Wire, a website they had launched about six months earlier with the financial backing of a Ted Cruz mega donor. Their angle was conservative media with a super spicy twist. Podcast and video. Fire. Absolute fire. Shapiro obviously was the charismatic frontman, while Boring handled the boring technical side. In a Vanity Fair piece, Boring recalled a conversation he had with Shapiro early on. I can expose a lot more people to you with video. I can expose them to you in a way that they will remember because people are visual. Let me make you famous and we'll have a much louder voice and a much bigger platform to advance our interests. Soon Shapiro was indeed exposing himself, hosting, as his site claims, the most listened to conservative podcast in the country where he talks about incredibly important things. The Disney kind of Imagineers have decided that they're only going to have female heroes from now on, which is absurd because Star Wars is essentially a, a little boy's property. I mean, if, if you look at like the percentages of people who really are huge Star Wars fans, it breaks down pretty heavily male, I would think. All jokes aside, Shapiro has made his fair share of alarming statements, which have been weaponized by a crowd that, you know, probably has more than enough weapons to begin with. For example, you said, sure. Israelis like to build, Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant bad dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that was that dumb? What? Well, yes, that's a dumb tweet. Shapiro's dumb words do have meaning, whether he keeps an archive of them or not. For example, the Quebec City mosque shooter who murdered six people was in part inspired by Shapiro's right-wing ideology and visited Ben Shapiro's Twitter account 93 times in the month leading up to the shooting. Okay, this is a campaign now to blame Ben Shapiro for inciting a deadly terror attack on a Canadian mosque last year? So why might Shapiro have inspired a xenophobic mania? I don't know. Take this tweet, for example, from 2016. Radical Muslim kills 49 LGBT people in Florida. Obama blames guns. Bernie says climate change is our biggest threat. 
priorities, people. Or maybe it was this video where Shapiro, through conjecture, labeling, and extrapolation without evidence, claims there are 608,030,000 radical Muslims. Then, well, we're above 800 million Muslims who are radicalized. More than half the Muslims on Earth. That's not a minority. That's now a majority. In other words, the myth of the tiny radical Muslim minority is just that. It's a myth. Shapiro obviously isn't a stranger to making controversial claims. Anytime he appears on a campus or popular media outlets like the Joe Rogan Experience or Fox News, his website, The Daily Wire, sees a giant spike in monetizable traffic. After all, they spend more promoting Shapiro than they do The Daily Wire, and for good reason. He won't shut up. There was a national apology for slavery. It was called the Civil War where 700,000 Americans died. Yeah, obviously engaging in a violent civil war isn't exactly considered an apology. Nevertheless, Shapiro doesn't skip a beat drumming up controversy for clicks. He dismissed the sexual assault allegations against then Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh because no one would describe what his genitalia looked like. Right, Stormy Daniels famously described President Trump's genitalia. Bill Clinton's genitalia. Details of such were, were talked about. Nobody has yet described Kavanaugh's genitalia. Now, that's not dispositive. Clearly, vivid descriptions of genitalia mean a lot to Ben Shapiro. The idea that, that sex or gender are malleable is not true. Shapiro fails to cite the widely accepted fact that gender is largely socially constructed. The Office of Research on Women's Health, the American Psychological Association, the World Health Organization, and countless other peer-reviewed studies disagree with Shapiro, who, by the way, is neither a doctor nor a psychologist, nor is he a screenwriter. But he goes on. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend, that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Aside from ignoring scientific research from many studies that discredit everything Shapiro is saying, he, more importantly, fails to treat human beings as such. But the fast-talking Shapiro just steamrolls his way through. He doesn't skip a beat. He talks quickly, confidently, and nasally, and is believed by many despite his lack of facts, which, by the way, don't care about your feelings. Scarce to be counted, filling the darkness.